your notebook, your chalk, your blackboard, your whiteboard, all the... <laughs> One of these days, I think I have to teach you the difference between a believer and a Christian. If you were a Christian, you go to church without a Bible, without a Bible. If you were a, a disciple, so now we get to know those who are believers and those who are out. <laughs> Amen. How many of you can remember exactly what I said last week? You can give me just a quick summary of what I said or what you do remember that I said last week. Because sometimes you say something but you are not so sure whether the people are hearing what you are saying. And it happens. That is why God will say to the prophet, what seest thou? Even though God has shown him, but God wanted him to know, want to know what, I, what he's seeing is exactly what he has shown him. The son of man, what seest thou? He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. God said, thou hast well seen. So that means that God can show you something and you will see something different. God can say something and you will hear have you ever said something to somebody and then the person will go and say something different? And said, that is not what I said. So I have to know if what I told you last week, who can just give me? Yes. The giver gives gifts. Okay, it's a plenty. Mm -hmm. Every gift comes. From God, yes. You have to know Him before knowing the gift. And why is that important? Knowing God before you know the gift. Huh? Oh, don't be shy. You can have the gift, and it doesn't mean that because you have the gift means that you know. God. I also remember I told you that every gift comes from God. Every gift comes from God. We are studying Him, and which means that even the gift that the devil has is from God. And you hear people saying that, well, he's using the power of the enemy. When you hear a believer saying that, or when you hear anybody saying that, it shows the person's lack of understanding. Every power comes from God, including the power of the devil. The problem is that the reason that you need God first before the gifts is because you can access the gifts without God. And by accessing the gifts without God, the difference between a prophet and a witch or a wizard is born again. Can I say it again? The difference between a, a wizard and a prophet is born again. The wizard is operating a gift without God. Yet that gift is from God. But that gift has been corrupted because of the corruption of the character of the person. Have you ever heard a saying that there is no evil without good. Evil is simply the perversion of what is good. And so without good, evil cannot exist. Are you here? See, you need to get this understanding so that you'll understand how spiritual things operate. When you go to a psychic, a psychic is operating with a gift. But that psychic is operating a gift that comes from God, yet it is not operating under the confinement of God's grace. And so the, a psychic can tell you things about the spiritual realm. That gift is a gift that came from God. But it is being operated without God. And whenever a gift is operated without God, that gift becomes corrupted. Amen. Amen. It becomes corrupted. 
The devil can never create power. The power he has. Bible says that he was anointed. Didn't God anoint him? Didn't God give him the power? Yes. But that power has been corrupted. Let's get that understanding. Amen. Okay, so who else can tell me something else? Yes. I'm looking for one word that I said. Who else can tell me something else? Hmm? The presence of God is God's personality. I said that God has attributes. Remember? God has attributes. Now, when you understand that God has attributes, you also know that God does not just have attributes, but the attributes also are God himself. Amen? It's not just that he has the attribute, but the attribute is God himself. So, for example, God doesn't have power. God has power, but the power is God himself. So, he can give you a power which is part of him, and yet that power is not him that he gives you. <laughs> Are you ready? You are going to dive deep. See, you can have a gift from God, but that gift from God is not God. But it comes from God. It has the nature of God in it. And so it does not necessarily mean that because it came from God, it lacks certain things that came from God. Amen. But the personality of God himself is still there. And so I can have something from him which came of him and not have him. Do, do you understand? It came from him, it is of him, but it is not him. <laughs> do you have it? No. I know you are confused. Yes. yes. Because you just came around. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask a question. Do unbelievers have God in them? Yes. And why are they not born again? Choice. Somebody say choice. Yes. They haven't accepted him. But they do have him. So they have him and still don't have him. You, <laughs> they have him but they don't have him so apostle so it's like they have him but they haven't come to the realization that they have him so they can't come to the point of using what he has given to them in that full capacity they haven't come to the realization of what they haven't come to the realization that they have him so they can't use what God has given them in the full capacity the full capacity okay. that's powerful did you hear what he said? Okay. <laughs> Don't get confused. <coughs> Is God everywhere? Yes. And so, God is everywhere and yet you can say that God is here. Does it imply that if God is here, it's not there? Any other place? He's everywhere. Then why do you say that God is here? <sighs> we need to challenge our thoughts. Challenge our minds. God is everywhere. And yet you say that the presence of God is here. And so by saying that the presence of God is here, does it imply that God is not somewhere else? Or God is not from where you are coming from? He is everywhere, but you acknowledge him. Why do you acknowledge him here? <laughs> Why do you acknowledge him here and not acknowledge him the place where you are coming from? Presence. Huh? He's what? So the Bible says the glory of God has called him. So his glory is everywhere. Mm -hmm. That means his presence is also everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we acknowledge him wherever we find ourselves because we are always in his presence. 
that's why we say everywhere omnipresent. So if that is the case, then why do people say that the presence of God is here? The manifested presence. The manifested presence. In that particular location where you are, that's the place. In that particular location. No, but sometimes, sometimes he's everywhere, but sometimes you feel him more than maybe you felt him before. Okay. In that same particular place. Okay, yes. So you are saying you don't invite him, then he's not there. <laughs> you see how sometimes challenging it is. Sometimes we see certain things we don't really fully understand. And so I can I say that God is in the person, and yes, He has God, and He still doesn't have God. You can have God and not have His presence as a gift. Amen. You can have what? God. And still not have his presence as a gift. And so, <laughs> it's good. It means that you guys are hearing what I'm saying. Just that you are having a little bit of challenge in getting to understand it fully. That is why people say understanding in all that you get in. Get what? I remember I said that your lack of understanding is a full proof of your humanity. The less you understand, the more you are human. Because when you begin to know, when you begin to understand, you get to a place where enhancement takes place, where you ascend in your consciousness you begin to know and understand who you truly are. And the more you understand who you truly are, the more you come to the realization how godly you are. The more you know, the more godly you become. The less you know, the more human. Yes. So, still in is that not, um, cannot, can that not be equated to like, okay, how do you build a new house? Uh-huh. Why is it not? But you don't have power in the game. But there's power in the game. Uh-huh. So my, my understanding is that not feeling the presence of God is your connection with God. Because if you don't have your connection, you would not feel the presence. Just like if you, again, with my analogy, if you have the house built, mm-hmm. you've powered the house with all kinds of cables, switches, uh-huh. and everything. But if you've not connected to the main power, mm-hmm. you will not feel that power in your house. Do you agree with him? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> there are some of you who are always on the new track now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what he's saying is that by building a house and you have just laid all the cables, all the power cables in the house. But see, you can have cables. If you had said you have cables in the house, you have connected power in the house, there is still power in all the cables. And still, your house can be dark unless you turn the switch on. You understand? The power is there. But something has to be done enough for you to experience the light. And so you can say that the light is there, but something has to be turned on. The switch. So God, so that means that you can still have power and still be in the dark. It doesn't mean that you don't, you don't have power. You have the power. And still you are Powerless. sleeping in the dark. Unless you turn it on. Is that easier for you? <laughs> that is easier for you, isn't it? So, when I say that they, they have God and still not have Him. 
He is there. Because if God is not in that person, then we can conclude that God is everywhere. If God is not in things, if God is not in places, if God is not in everybody, then that statement, God is everywhere, cannot be true. That means that in the person in whom God is not, if that person, God is not in that person, then God is not everywhere. Hmm? So what I said was, God, they, they have God and still not have him. You understand? You can have something and still not have it. Yet you, if I tell you that you know everything, what will you tell me? No. Is that what you tell me? No, you don't know everything. That's what you will tell me that it's not true. I don't know everything. But I can tell you that you do know everything. Because everything that you know is because you have an attribute, a portion, a fraction of God's omniscience. Did I tell you that? And the word omniscience means knowing everything. So if I have a fraction, a part of his omniscience, that means that I know everything. And that also means that I know God. Because if the attribute is not just a part of God, but God himself, then I know things that God knows. But you still say that you don't know everything. Your subconscious knows everything. But you get to know what you know when what needed to be known is moved from your subconscious to your conscious mind. Let me give you an example. When we talk about the mind, we're not talking about that white tissue or brain in that skull. Now, there are two areas of your mind. The conscious and the subconscious. The conscious mind is known as the active mind. And the subconscious mind is known as the inactive mind. Now, the subconscious mind is like a servant. The conscious mind is like the master. So what the servant will do is what the master have told the servant to do. Now this is where you have to get it seriously. Your subconscious mind does not differentiate between bad information and good information. No. As for a subconscious mind, he is a slave. He is a, a servant. Whatever it is told, it does. No difference. And so, when you are trying to learn how to drive, which part of your mind was activated? Your conscious mind. Because you are learning something for the first time. So your conscious mind becomes the mind that you are using to learn how to drive. So you see how you are here holding the steering wheel and how you are looking at the road. You are stiff like a board. <laughs> now, what happened two months after your learning experience? All the information that you gathered, where did that information go? Into your subconscious. And so, after that information had gone into your subconscious, that ability, that knowledge to know how to drive is already there. 
You can just not drive for five years, ten years, sit in the car, and that knowledge will move from the subconscious into your conscious mind. And so when you are driving, now when you are driving, you can still be on your phone. You can still be talking on your phone. Still be eating at the same time whilst your one hand is on the steering wheel and still having a conversation. But who, which part of you is driving? The subconscious is not the one driving the car. It is not your active mind because your active mind is in the conversation with somebody else and yet you are still driving. Without any struggle, you are just turning signals. Some of us, you don't, you don't even look at the roads. You just, just drive. Because you pass there so many times that you, you, you just get there without even looking at the name of the streets. Your subconscious mind is doing the driving. Whilst your active mind is still in conversation. Or sometimes still testing. But you are driving at the same time. And so, because your subconscious mind, that information has been given, that's the question mind, it does it without any. So, whatever information you feed the subconscious, that is what the subconscious will produce, regardless of whether it is bad or good. It makes no difference. And so, in the test, when they are doing medical tests, they select groups and they divide them. Then there are those that they are being given the real vaccine. And there are those that are being given the placebo. You know the placebo? Mm -hmm. The placebo is just water with no vaccine in it. And then they are testing these two groups. Why? They, they want to tell your body. And so the person who is receiving the placebo thinks that he's getting the vaccine. And that knowledge will give the subconscious the ability to do. And so the subconscious will now begin to condition the body for healing. Even though the person has not been given the reverse. Mm -hmm. But the subconscious believes. And so by that belief, it will condition the body for healing. So, whatever... <laughs> Whatever you believe and your subconscious accepts it, just as a man in soul. If you grew up believing that your house, nobody was a billionaire, you will never. 